The rocket is assembled from all of its cargo pieces, then load rocket, right? I, you know, <laughs> I gotta be honest with that game. From the beginning up until the last time I played, which was what, a month and a half ago? Oh, shit, a month and a half ago. <laughs> right? I was blown four away. Four or five? No, it couldn't have been that long, has it? No, it hasn't been four or five months. It's a whole season. Yeah. About four months. Dude, it has not been. Four Dude, months. you didn't play this game with me, I don't think, after I left. After you left Bucky's? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At least three times. Oh, oh, oh no, no. Two for sure. No. Yeah. Maybe, okay. All right. Because well, you had me... The, the two, Maybe maybe two and a half, three months. Yeah, months. you were like, oh, here's our new ammo for the turrets and your gun. Yeah. I was thinking it was like, I think we left off on yellow. There's yellow, green, and red. That's all I remember. yeah. yeah. But yeah, that game is too fucking much, man. Uh, but that by far is the most complicated game I've ever ever played. And uh, the ending to get to get to the ending, like I'm not. I I want to I want to say, I mean, if you look at like the research and you you average it up by how much research has to be done before you actually can beat the game. Yeah, I would say I'm somewhere about half. But then the problem is, is that. The further the research goes, yeah, that's where I'm like, well, I guess I'll need another whole planet of oil and stuff, which only took me several days to create the first planet. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you fucking find this Factorio game? I don't remember, man. Uh, somebody told me about it. Like, but, that's a weird fucking game to stumble across. I gotta be honest with you. Like, you don't yeah, accidentally I, just download this fucking monster of a game. Well, yeah. It, it, so, somebody mentioned that... It, I, I don't even remember who told me about it. Somebody told me about it, and I went and looked it up. So online. Factorio has a 10 out of 10 rating on Steam. 95% of people like the game. That's pretty cool. That's an extremely high rating. That For is. a game to have 10 out of 10? On Steam. Yeah. No less. That's not just like some company giving it 9.5 out of no, 10. No, people you know? don't give a fuck. If they don't like something, they'll be like, oh, fuck you and your dead mother. Yeah, <laughs> that's, just... that's why I like the I like the I like the Steam rating system. It's all user. Yes. They don't they don't have experts coming in and telling you that it's a good game. They they it's literally by demand. It's literally, literally by how many people said it was good. No, and like I like SimCity, and my favorite Sim game was probably Sim Tower. It was just, it seemed to be more fun and more, I don't want to say user friendly because it makes me sound fucking lazy or whatever, but like the difficulty of SimCity with like the few barometers that you could have, like with what taxes and, you know, fucking road construction crime and, um, what's the other thing? Pollution. It was always like too difficult, but the the version of like SimCity or whatever with like the tower where you're just literally building like a fucking condominium tower that people live in that has shops and like all this other stuff and it it's not nearly as complicated but like Factorio it took everything and dialed it to 11 yeah yeah you, that game can get as complicated well I mean like I said if I if I'd actually taken the time to learn that LTN stuff uh, I, I'd actually be taking a, like a life skill I think away uh, in the meantime because that, that a lot of this stuff is actually like programming where it's like if uh, I, I don't I, the if statements and stuff like that that you get into programming where it's like if this equals this and this then this can occur you know uh, if statements I, I don't know what you exactly call them but that's pretty much all what all of the LTN stuff is and I've I've managed to uh, <laughs> what do you what do you call that? What uh, I was trying to say a, a word that bachelorized it, but that's not it. I debauched it, <laughs> bastardized it, <laughs> bastardized it. Yes, yeah. I bastardized it so that it basically works with my my limited ability to want to actually do research to freaking learn how to beat a game. Well, like the the thing with a game like Factorio is 
you have to pay attention if you want to fucking play the game. And if you want to get better at the game, you have to you have to do math and get really good with your spatial reasoning because when you have conveyor belts of miles and miles long just chucking fucking coal or metal which is being picked up by an electrical fucking arm that's running off of your coal plant or something it's just too much but like if you if you don't want it to take too long to go from one place to the other then you can use these little robots that just pick the shit up when it's ready and then they take stuff somewhere i'm like dude <laughs> like I just want to shoot a dude. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like it, it is. It, it that game that in, that game encompassed uh, creative design, uh, uh, base base building, efficiency, uh, and war, all in the same. The war is a very limited portion because that's all I wanted to do is go beat up aliens, and then I was fucking, I was swiftly put out of my misery many times. War is different now. Yeah, we. Uh, I got to the point where I can make uh, nukes, and I could put them in uh, delivery cannons. So it basically means that I don't even. It, I don't even have to have a presence on the planet and be like, I don't like you. Yeah. Nuke. Well, I, <laughs> I pulled it up, and <laughs> the game follows an engineer who crash lands on an alien planet and must harvest resources and create automated industry to build a rocket. However, as it is a sandbox game, players can continue the game past the end of the storyline. So who knows what that fucking looks like? Because you're on what, how many planets now? Uh, yeah, and I would say I have to be. I, I would say... Uh, the, the vanilla the vanilla version you don't ever actually have to build what they call a mega base and uh my home planet i think now maybe may be considered a mega base I'm, I'm not really even sure if it would be considered that how long did it take you to where after you were done mining everything in this guy i'm embarrassed day? i'm embarrassed to say how many hours i put into this right now well no just initially to get off the planet because for those of you that don't know as I've already mentioned, we're talking about a game called Factorio. And as I just read, you're some fucking smart guy who crash landed on a planet somehow, even though you're smart enough to build all this wild shit out of your ass, basically. And your goal is to get off the planet. How, how many hours does that take from beginning to end, roughly, for you to gather all your resources, build the machinery and the conveyor belts and all that so they all use each other, I was, I was going to say, I, I, I had a very specific goal in mind when I created this game. Which, which was, was what? Well, there's like a whole community of people who basically do nothing but come up with greater and better designs for the factory setups for, for engineering, utilizing their resources. And I just wanted to do it all myself. So I beat the vanilla version, doing it all myself, and I'm pretty certain that took over 400 hours. Uh, this game, <laughs> uh, and I said this is probably this is one of the reasons I'm actually thinking about just just stopping the game because a it got more complicated than real life, and b I've only got about a thousand hours in, and probably about a thousand hours to go at a guess, maybe not that much, but a lot. To do what though? Uh, in the in the um, expansion pack, you're supposed to basically build a spaceship and uh, build a spaceship and then uh, get it to travel at a certain velocity. That's it. Mm. But but yeah, in the expansion, you're not just on one planet building a factory. You're I'm like I said, I th I think I'm on I'm on seven planets right now, hauling resources back to one planet and its orbit to create things and it's it's just gotten obnoxious <laughs> like it's it's I, i'm not sure half the time when i play if it's a, a out of compulsion I, i'm pretty sure most of the time it's just now out of compulsion it's it's neurosis that's 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 driving me forward like i i mean i i keep looking at this game going if i'd done anything like this in real life I would probably be making really good money by now or I would not be doing it anymore <laughs> because this is way too much work. 
uh, it's way too much effort. For me, if as soon as like a game just doesn't have payoff, because like I don't have any uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for um, ego to try to finish something. I'm I don't try to play the game because. I'm gonna show the game who's boss. Like I, that's not how I see a lot of video uh, games. I wish I was like that. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if that's how you want to approach the game. But I would assume some people that maybe make certain types of games don't do it to make somebody else's life a living hell. Yeah, I play games that people create the games to make somebody's life a living hell, and those are my favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That my favorite, my all-time favorite. Game uh, my all-time favorite game games are, are like Dark Souls. Uh, the Dark Souls games were the hardest games, the hardest RPGs anybody ever created. And yeah, you, you almost have to cheat. Uh, Elden Ring was a little bit similar. It was a little bit, uh, it, it was a little bit dialed back mm. for difficulty, but still, still, uh, I think I had to cheat in that. Uh, and I remember I played all of those games until I was absolutely just like. I can take this no further. I I've gone everywhere. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. And Darkest Dungeon, the Darkest Dungeon series, which is basically a game where uh, things don't go your way. Yeah. Uh, expeditions go badly. What do you do when they go badly? Okay. And all of your characters basically end up coming out with psychological maladies that you don't have necessarily the money to treat, or you only have enough money to treat. Some people. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so you have to pick and choose. <laughs> it, it, it would be like worse. Uh, any kind of real life scenario would be worse than than being in a hospital and and deciding who lives and who dies. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. But well, actually, it'd be equivalent. <laughs> it would be equivalent. But no, I do. I like. I like. I like playing the uh, absolute most challenging games I can play. I, I really? Like it, yeah. I, I want it to be as harder than anything else I've ever played. I never more mentally ever challenging. thought about ever doing anything. I would say anything like that, but all, especially a game. Because like I'm, I'm going to a place to explore. And almost, almost to the point of if I could live in an alternative life. Like what in this game can I do to make my life better in the game? Not how bad can I deal with the shit to overcome it? I've never even thought about approaching anything like that. I mean, like it's that. it's got to like the uh, no, it's like it's like following the you know the, the Lord of the Rings series where it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse, and then you get like you know you got a hail mary of a chance here. I I I love being the underdog. I do. I love being the underdog. I love being challenged to the point where I crack. And sometimes I have. I've, sometimes. What I've, does that look like to you? What is cracking? Right. Not just going. It, it on looks tilt. like it looks like it, it looks like what I am right now. I'm actually recovering. I'm I'm two weeks, or two weeks. It feels like longer than that. Something like that. Away. I've slept. I've slept for almost two weeks from trying to be a professional poker player. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've slept for almost two weeks. I was playing 40 plus hours a week easily. And the emotional highs and lows and the morality questions and the uh, emotional the emotional moments, uh, the fact that you sit at a table, at, you can call it work, but normally at work you have a couple of friends. <laughs> and when you play poker, everyone at the table is your adversary, even when they're your friend. They're your adversary, and you're there to take their money. That's the name of the game. And uh, yeah, I cracked. Uh, I I I I did not succeed in becoming a professional poker player. With with all that being said, is poker in your estimation or experience is that the greatest game for you or? to you like your thoughts on on like gaming like what brought you to poker and not to other particular games or hobbies or whatever you want to call them like uh so um many many games revolve around 
games always revolve around the theme that uh, usually something that usually something that would compete. Sometimes it's just like immerse, right? Like you have role playing games where you'll never really do too bad because your character will continue to get better, and even if something beats you, you will eventually overcome it. So there's that kind of game. And, and really, there's not much more can be said about that kind of game. Most of the time in those kinds of games, you're not learning anything. Um, it's just immersion. So there's that kind of game. And then there's this game like, say, chess. I love, I absolutely love chess. And uh, as a result of my limited IQ, along with you know, my, my, uh, wanting to study any further in yeah. that game and not just play the game. Right. Um, I will only be roughly, a 1600 at blitz chess five minute or well, it's considered, I think five minutes considered rapid chess. I will only be a 1600 to a 1550. And I continue to play that game because I really, really like chess and I really think it's a beautiful game. But my intelligence isn't going to continue to increase with age. Mm. And so I just play because I really enjoy it. And I compete because I really enjoy it, but there there won't be any shit. Give it another 10 years and I'll probably start actually seeing my rating drop a few points on average, you know, (laughs) from old age. But I'm not... uh, I'm not going to play poker probably again for a long, long time. Um, what I did love about that game was it's one of the few games I can think of that actually encompasses, uh, doesn't just encompass your ability to math, that it encompasses psychology and uh, strategy and your bravery level in the same game. And in fact, it's one of the few games I can think of that actually requires bravery. Hmm. as a skill set. One of the few games I can think of that actually you're, you're constantly practicing emotional control to do well at. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, there may be some, definitely some exceptions, but... I always think about anybody going on tilt and any type of game, because I've heard that expression regarding around gaming uh whether it's been like magic the gathering or playing a fighting game or you people at a, a bjj tournament brazilian brazilian jiu-jitsu and they just lost a few matches and then they get in this funk fighting i can see i can see bravery being as as a part of fighting yeah i can well, see that uh like you said emotional control i think that's even a higher stance to take um because that's what I, I feel like that's what bravery gets derived from. So yeah, emotional control definitely. But it, yeah, it's I I never really thought about that with most games, emotional control. Cuz like if you think about yeah, if you think about anything whether it's mental or physical, if you're fucking losing your mind or you're just out of control, you're probably not going to be making the best plays with whatever that game is. No, you're 100% right, yeah. That's nuts. All right, so... Well, I never thought about it like that. I've never... I've never even took that into consideration, emotional control. I was always just like, ah, oh, you know, fucking just don't be an well, asshole. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, you, you, I think you run into emotional control. Really, you're going to run into emotional control in any game, especially any... Um, any... At the top level in any sport, there's going to be psychology. Mm. And at the top level in even chess and things like that, there's things like, oh, I have to, this is the first time I ever have to play against Magnus Carlsen. If I win, then, you know, I'll, I'll make headlines. You know, there's, there's, there's that. And that's, that's a fact. So yeah, you're probably dealing with a lot of emotional stress when you, when you sit down and play that because you're, you're basically testing unfortunately your ego is going to be a part of everything because your ego is the thing that's causing you to compete <laughs> yeah. in the first place. And, uh, and, and in all honesty, that's probably the same reason why I always gravitate towards the hardest games is it's not my intellect 
that it's drawn to that, it's literally the challenge. It's literally uh, like Slay the Spire. It's probably one of the hardest card games I've ever gotten every single achievement on. And I'm not sure if I can say I'm proud of that, <laughs> but I will say it's a very low number of people that actually have all the achievements on that stupid ass card game. What the Slay the Spire? What? It's just a card game. It's a deck builder, like uh, oh, okay. kind of like, kind of like Magic, but you run it, but you're running it through with a character that basically carries on from his last battle. Think of Magic, but you're an actual person who continues with your. <laughs> with your hit points onto the next game. So like Magic the Gathering plus <laughs> RPG. The, yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I've never even heard of that. It was a really cool game. It had really bad graphics, um, but it was very, uh, very well, uh, well thought out from beginning to end as far as a deck builder. It was absolutely been, nobody's touched it since. It's It's been years and years. Nobody's been Digital to only? It. Yeah, it's on Steam, PlayStation. I've never heard of that. It, ever. It's it's a lot of fun. It, it's hard as shit uh, to to beat it your first time. It, it, you're not gonna just. I'll put it this way: you're probably not gonna get lucky. I remember my friend got me to play that game, and I said this is stupid. And I was looking at the graphics. <laughs> By the time I finished the first game, I was still saying it was stupid, but I wanted to play again. And. After I got through like about three or four games, I was like, "This game is pretty. This game is pretty cool." And he's like, oh, "I know," <laughs> and uh, and uh, and we played that stupid game until we beat it, and then I, I basically spent I, I don't know ungodly amounts of hours going and unlocking the absolute most difficult achievements that uh, probably been put on just about any game except for maybe the Dark Souls series and and a few others to get all the achievements just absolutely absurd they made that game so hard it's kind of like the same thing with the darkest dungeon thing it's just it's just so hard it's sickening <laughs> yeah hey, i've never I, i'm looking at pictures of it right now it's really interesting yeah it's really fun though uh I mean, that's the thing too i i'm not interested in a game if it if it's not intellectually titillating in some way in other words if there's no strategy in it I'm, if it's just like shoots and ladders we're gonna roll some dice and however you do is how you do look at the pretty lights and colors or whatever i'm not into that game i you know couldn't never never had any interest in eight liner machines or or anything that just was just solid luck no there are certain things that i really enjoy because I, I for example like when i play uno i do notoriously bad but i lean into the fact that i just kind of act like an asshole the whole time <laughs> like i'll be playing with like three other people and it'll be skip me and then i'll draw four and then they choose a color and i don't have the color and i'm just like mother but i lean into how just absurd it is because my I, I get like 30 cards in my hand and it's just it's just insane so there's certain <laughs> circumstances like that to where i really enjoy how how ridiculous the math is i was gonna say i i don't have a problem um i don't have a problem at all and it's one of the reasons i really do enjoy games i don't have a problem at all with losing i don't take it personally mm. i uh you know the truth is if you win at chess you probably didn't learn anything mm. uh if you get beat at chess, you do. If you learn, if you learn something in chess and you played against somebody and, and and they're very good and you beat them, what you learned is that you're probably better than they are. If you can beat them on a regular basis, then you simply know it. And there's really not much more to understand against that particular player. If I was going to continue to play that particular player over and over again, um, I, I would probably just continue to excel against that player. However, when a player beats you. They know something that you don't. If they're beating you consistently, they know something that you don't. And in that case, I simply want to keep playing and playing and playing until I understand what they what they understand. I got so, you. Yeah. So with uh, versing somebody that's much less than you or much uh, just much less of a competitor. You have diminishing returns much quickly, much more quickly than you would if you were versing a better opponent of any kind, probably. 
Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, in, interesting uh, use of uh, uh, words. Yes, diminishing returns is actually. Um, I remember uh, Tom Dwan uh, is one, one of the most iconic figures in poker history. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, Tom Dwan saying that about poker. He said, it's a game of diminishing returns basically saying that at the higher levels you're not you're not killing it anymore your 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 edge is 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 only that it's an edge you know uh where i could honestly say at least before my experience here uh trying to be a professional poker player mm. i i could say that any any given day i'm going to have a 70 percent chance of coming out ahead of the casino and that was pretty common in my home game uh, and that was not an easy home game. All of those people, we, we were all growing and learning off of each other. It was an absolutely brutal game. Um, uh, e even in that circle, I was, I was actually doing 80-85% uh, win rates. And that was mostly just because I'm good with people and understanding psychology. So no matter how they were changing their game, I was keeping up with them. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was <laughs> watch somebody shift in their seat and know they switched gears on you you know <clears throat> oh <laughs> so you were like oh i see you i see that you switched a gear you start playing a little differently now huh so one of the the things yeah. that i want to talk about uh today specifically because you've mentioned this a few different times and we would talk about it a little bit but it would always divert kind of back to the more spiritual side of things but you would always say um in our more in-depth conversations that you felt like you were kind of put here to play games yeah i think that's i i think that's true i'll, I'll be honest uh, yeah uh, uh coming coming at and i don't think there's any way to come at it except from either a philosophical or spiritual point of view but uh, I would say that if we actually had any say before we came down, mm. if we did, and I, I'm I'm not swearing that to be a truth. I'm just saying that's just, that's just a gut a way feeling. to think about it. Yeah. yeah, a way to think about it. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I was three years old when the Atari came out. I was hooked almost immediately. Uh, before that, I remember. I remember my parents saying if, if they wanted to entertain me as a baby, they'd just roll a ball and I'd roll it back and I'd shut up. I would just do that for hours. So, <laughs> so, so, I mean, hmm. literally I came out of the womb wanting to, wanting to game, wanting to play, uh, wanting to experience games. And I, I wouldn't say that's my spiritual role as much as that's the obsession and compulsion that wanted me to come back what or yeah so let's <laughs> uh, let's fuck with that thought for a little bit so let's get philosophical or try to tack on some more words could another way of thinking about that and not just being like playing games but interacting with the world in like a higher plane or higher level of of existence in some way cuz i'm mean, surely if you really did feel that way on a on a higher level than, than the word game itself i don't think would do it any justification because i think when anybody hears the word game or gaming or f like fun or hobbies or activities they just think it's nonsense to pass the time but i, I don't get the sense that that's what you mean no no i take my i i take all gaming very 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 seriously so with that being said and also taking the information that you gave me just a few minutes ago about choosing a challenging game, do you think that's like abstractly trying to interact with the world in an artistic way? Or is that some sort of way to like buck the system and play by your own rules and get by doing that i don't i, don't, I was trying I th to think I, about I it i think I, I think that any any excuse i make would be close to justification 
or uh, just justification for what I do. Uh, but the truth is, I can't tell you exactly like some of the games I play, like I play chess, but I don't play. I know that I'm, like I said, right now I'm a 15, 50 or something like that at chess. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow when I play, by the end of the day, I could be a 1600. But in the next day, I could be a 1500. Somewhere in there, I'm always going to be a 1550. Um, but it doesn't stop me. So it's not... Uh, one of the things I do love about chess is I, I love the competition. I love uh, competing uh, mentally, psychologically with a clock mm. against somebody in, in a strategic or tactical sense. I love doing that. Um, because I don't mind losing, I will play over and over and over again. I can't say why other than it tickles my brain to do so. I mean, really, I can't. I can't give you a good reason because you're then compelled to do so. I'm compelled. I'm literally compelled. I mean, look at Factorio. There's no. There's no one telling me that I. There's nobody to beat in that game except the game itself. There's. There's nothing to beat. Um, it, it's. It's simply the learn. And and you know, since I've been playing that game, I have learned all kinds of crazy stuff. I've. I've. I've learned all kinds of uh, wild multitasking. Editing tricks that you could do with the materials you have. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would definitely say yes. I've I've derived. In, in fact, I could say from every great game that's ever been completed, you can draw several life lessons from any any particular game. Uh, poker, of course, being like right at the top of the list, and uh, you know, even even with chess. Uh, mm. e even with even with games like um, um, games that you're 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 like in some kind of a sandbox world trying to get around it, it, these these concepts in these games are things that you can yes you can definitely utilize in real life to uh, to improve your life and unfortunately if you're somebody like me you're you can be neurotic about it, switching back and forth between what is exactly more important. <laughs> you know, mm. is it, well, what was the most important thing I did today? Was it the game or was it real life? You know, or the, you know, what I managed to pull from the game, use in real life and things like that. It is compulsion. Though. It's, 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 it's definitely compulsion. I don't have a, it's not competition. It's not altogether ego either. Something in my brain, wants to play a game just to play the game like with chess there's no ego in that game for me um i more people playing chess if you want to see a grown man act like a child then under normal circumstances he's a very civilized very well educated very well spoken individual and you get him to play a game of chess and he loses and he'll act like a child why does he do that because he's a bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's ego. Yeah. When you when you get into a game like that, and he gets uh, say a man, some man has put forth a lot of intellectual effort to be good at this game. He's put forth study to mm. be good at this game. Yeah. And there's no other there's no other factors really that should be in the game other than except maybe at the higher levels of play where you really do get into like some emotional psychological you know mm. pitfalls but you're playing online yeah playing chess why do why does a man who knows nothing about you suddenly decide to curse you out like he's a four-year-old attacking you and you know calling you uh, you know racial prejudice <laughs> names just because he's mad it's because you've attacked his intellectual ego dude i experienced this well, I think a lot of people do, and I've definitely experienced this more than once, but playing Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. For example, I was uh, I was in... the So the way Call of Duty is set up now, like if you're not on there with a friend, like it'll just put you into a lobby yeah. of whatever people that are trying to play a particular type of game. Yeah. And then after that game, it might uh, jostle the lobby to make it a little bit more balanced so, like, somebody that was, like, dominating, they now go into a different lobby with people that are closer to their skill level, based on, like, points and whatever else. And the game is pretty good with that. Um, 
this one game I was playing, there were three people that were playing together. They were all chatting, and I could tell that they were friends. And these people just weren't good players. And I'm not a good player, but they were much worse than me. So that that's just me being honest, and obviously that says something in the fact that I know I'm not good, but you're absolute dog shit. <laughs> right. But, um, right. you know, I, I had my headphones and my mic on, and I'm not a person that talks shit. I don't, I don't like doing it. It's not fun. And uh, I would rather make a friend than try to overcome some some faux enemy that this game is going to create. I, I just look at it as like a constant challenge that I'm never going to master. Right, yeah. yeah. And for, for me, that's why Call of Duty is fun. Yeah. So as this game ends, and with th- these three particular people, I, I really knocked their dick in the dirt. Uh, two were female, one was male. And like as the game ended or whatever, and this guy was like, yeah, you know, uh, whatever, 1v1 me, that's what's up. And, you know, like, I'm not good at the game. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I'm not good. Like, you just suck. <laughs> and, like, right, like right. I'm thinking to myself, <coughs> like, you don't even have anything to prove. Why are you saying something to me? Like, you're just not even paying attention to what's going on in the game. You're not hiding behind obstacles when you're shooting at me. You're out in the open. You reload at improper times. Yeah. You're you're not covering your ass. You're just a shitty player. Yet you feel the one to challenge me in front of everybody for whatever. But that just goes to add to your point. Like people just act like fucking assholes. Yeah. It, when they it, don't do well or they're not humbled properly, especially from an early age. If you don't know how to lose, it's really ugly to see yeah. somebody in their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties that starts to like fucking pout and act childish and yeah, scream and, and kick. And, yeah, because you know, well, a lot of us actually, you know, played. You know, gr- growing up, I I was uh, I played little league baseball, mm-hmm. soccer, and basketball, and I can tell you. Well, I can tell you that number one, uh, these things did have an effect on 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 me as a person, but not necessarily uh, great and or positive. You know, they say about they they say that uh, playing team sports hel- helps develop the uh, better uh, work relationships and things like that, which may be true. <laughs> but what they don't talk about is the the uh players who played these games that came in very i mean i I was on the bad news bears baseball basketball and soccer team we had the worst coach in the leagues in every single one of these i was one of the star players on every one of those teams and we lost nearly every game (laughs) in every (laughs) I mean, it was brutal, dude. Uh, not many kids had a childhood like mine. Not many kids could go from one to the. I mean, and the truth is, it, it, to go on any one of those uh, the better teams, I'm not tooting my own horn to say I was one of the best players. <laughs> I'm saying that you're the all star rookie player. I was, was going to say I, I may have been. Yeah, I, I may have been uh, middle ground at best. I'm one of the better teams. I may have been middle ground. They got that they're like, oh yeah, you can you can shoot a yeah you can shoot a hoop, Dave. You're all right. You're all right. You know you got to work on this, work on that. No, I was one of the star players. I was never the star player, but I was always like second up, third up, always. And uh, and and definitely uh, to toot my own horn, I was always the most entertaining player. <laughs> and I mean that by laughs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From from the audience. <laughs> uh, I remember I remember playing games and and hearing people laugh as I would either foul somebody for the umpteen time in basketball or shutting them down but also getting a personal foul at the same time. <laughs> Anything I could to win. <laughs> I was a highly competitive kid, you know. I, I wasn't really I wasn't really brutal as far as, you know, I didn't have anger issues or anything. I was just that competitive, man. We were gonna play. If you were beating me, I was gonna play harder. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was, it was no like shit. the driving force. <laughs> I was going to beat you. I mean, it, 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 you know. Uh, That's interesting. I was going to play better. I was always I was curious. Catch up to your level. Why? Um, and maybe it's just a certain level of uh, competitor that I just don't have in myself. Because I, 
I never seen the appeal of going outside the bounds of the game to fuck with somebody because I didn't have it within myself to be good at the game within the confines of which we were given. Yeah, I, I would say I never, I, I've never, uh, from a competitive sense, uh, I have a code on that, which is that I don't, I understand that that's a part of, especially at the higher levels of play of anything that, you know, sports and things like that, people get paid that uh, psychology plays a big role. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I will definitely say, as for myself, I've never resorted to, or rarely, probably only under uh, a, a, an emotional loss of control, have I ever resorted to any kind of pettiness, uh, attacking somebody mm. psychologically, name-calling. Well, you know, I, I played the Call of Duty thing uh, like you. I, I played it for years and years when I was younger, and I never was that great. And, uh, you know, you play, and it's one of the few games where, uh, you know, no matter what age you are, what your ethnicity, or what your background is, you're going to get called a black Jew at least once <laughs> and with anger behind it yeah. for no good reason other than the player is just trying to make you upset. That is all he's, he's literally just trying to psychologically upset you so that you'll play worse. And that's his strategy. And, and I've never, I, I've never personally resorted to that pettiness, uh, but it, it is there. You know, it, it is there in, in, in every level of game, especially where money is involved. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I don't know. It, it makes sense to a certain level. If, if we're talking like competition and gaming, um, I think the reason that it's always been like a turnoff for me is, uh, and this is just like intellectual, like like thoughts like just me juggling ideas but i'm like well where does it end with with anything like where where are we going to draw the line is it going to be at shit talking is it going to is it going to be when we're swatting each other and doxing each other are we going to start killing each other's family members just so we have the the edge in the other person for you know our next magic the gathering deck that we're making so you can't concentrate because you had to go to your family member's funeral last week like what's the i, I was gonna say it can you know I, I i think along that line of thought it can get pretty dirty uh, well putin, yeah putin is uh went uh with the 87 percent uh judo uh, approval or, or the vote went 87 percent to Putin. Oh, I thought you were going to say his judo record. Uh, this last time, now Putin is 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 notorious uh, as as being basically the mobster that took over. Yeah, the, the Soviet I feel like Union. That's common knowledge, right? And and it was interesting because I just read about this just a few minutes ago, and you don't really think so much of elections as being like a game, but they most definitely are. Mm, yeah, and. Um, I also found interesting from what you were just saying that almost all of the relevant uh, uh, people that were up against him are actually dead. <laughs> They're just dead. <laughs> so, uh, some of them were killed by poison. One of them died in a plane crash. And uh, so that's a really great question. Is uh, where does where does where does you know for for somebody like Putin, for instance, competition doesn't end, and there is no sense of fair play. It's win at all costs. Yeah, and well, that's the highest level though of g gaming, I guess you could say. If we're gonna just bastardize the fucking term and just be very wide ranging with our vocabulary, but. When you can control pieces on the chessboard that is planet Earth and can possibly be in control of the lives of billions of people, whether or not you decide you have a bad day and just want to launch nukes at whoever because you don't like such and such happening, that's kind of fucking wild. It is. But... Uh... But yeah, I, I I don't even necessarily think it's bastardizing. I think that I, I That's think just when, standard. Well, I just I think that when when people think of when people think of gaming, they go to very specific games. We go to sports 
uh, and we go to some of the intellectual games and, uh, and and we go to video games and maybe some of the classics you know like bat game and things mm, like this yeah. have have a little bit of luck and and skill uh, both in them and uh, uh, but that's I don't think it in any means uh, uh, when you're really talking about games, you have to look at, well, what is what is a game composed of? More, a game is composed of competition. Anytime that there's competition, I think there can be said to be a game. That includes elections, uh, sales, uh, anything where you're actually competing against other people. There is a game afoot, um, and it's whoever plays the game best that's probably going to uh, yeah, that's true. come out ahead. So as far as that goes, work is uh largely uh for for people who are into it work is largely a game you know uh a mutual manager uh at bucky's uh your former manager my current manager derek i told him that i kind of gamified a lot of my tasks at bucky's so i can just kind of deal with the day a little bit better so I, you know, I told him that like when I'm fucking on the inside floors getting baskets and carts and, and cleaning up all these messes, I'm like, I kind of think about it like a video game and all these tasks and all these calls that I get, they're like on my mission list. And, you know, I try to coordinate which one I can do and how long it's going to take. And I, you know, jokingly said, I, I see myself as I'm doing this task of like a little, like a little, uh, completion bar slowly filling up until the job is complete. Yeah. And he said, you know, that's funny. I like that or whatever, but I, you know, and my prize basically for how good I do is just me getting paid. <laughs> you get to go home. <laughs> Pretty much. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think it is. I, I, I think that gaming is, uh, gaming is uh, the idea of gaming is actually conceptual, just like almost anything else. But it's, con it's conceptual. Um, it's very easy, for instance, to think of people in car sales as, as being in a game against each other and competing, because they are. Yeah. And uh, I think any, any salesman that would tell you differently is, is probably feeling their self full of bullshit. Because mm -hmm. uh, they are they are competing now in, in gaming. We don't necessarily, you know. My dad almost went pro in uh, basketball. Really? Yeah. Uh, in in the end, they said his hands were too, his hands and his body itself was a little bit too short for uh, oh. for the pro. But but the funny thing is, I had to listen to these stories. I had to live in my dad's. Sh I loved basketball, but I had to live in my dad's shadow. Um, constantly around my family i got so sick about hearing about how how incredible my dad was at at uh and all the stories of of uh people watching him play you know 21 against some great player and you know and then both basically going to the end and him making the line just just these absolute you know stories after a while you're just like yeah that's great i'm never going to be that good <laughs> you know thanks thanks for thanks for telling me a story about how good i'm not going to be because that's that's not going to be me but i remember there, there was one really good lesson and i probably got most of my gaming uh like uh, liking gaming, I, I probably got all that from my dad. His level of competition was super, super high. But I remember there was one thing that my dad told me that I really do agree with. He said, he said, as you go along, he said, at first you're competing, you're competing against other people. At a certain point, you're going to get good enough where there's not enough people to compete with anymore. So you begin to have to compete against yourself. And really, that's where you should stay anyway is uh you were doing this now can you do this better and can you do it better than the day before and can you do it better than before and that? then eventually the ultimate goal is just going to be the consistency of your maximum output right kind of like you were saying in in any good game there is no ceiling like in call of duty you'll never hit a ceiling because it, it's such a wide spectrum of uh even Factors. though there's yeah the, even though there's even though there's you know, mainly it's about putting a reticule on your screen in a certain place and and uh, and hitting a button. Mainly that's it. Yeah, if you were to break it down. But I was gonna say that's not how I played it because I always knew I was kind of kind of slow on that, and I I was this 
my goal in the game was not how many kills can I get in the game, but uh, my kill to death ratio was very important to me. So I was playing my own game. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people play that game. They'd say they had a good game if they had like, you know, 20 deaths and uh, or 20 kills and six deaths or something. They'd say they had a good game. I would say I had a great game if I was eight and one. (laughs) <laughs> and, yeah. and a lot of my games I would you know when I was playing the Call of Duty I would because I was just I, I would think of it like real what would I do and I, I, oh yeah you'd get yeah. like real life I'd be like I'd sit here behind this door well, like, <laughs> the thing with that is because be you respawn sneaky. you're not gonna be you're not gonna be fearing of death and the closest you get with Call of Duty are certain um, game types like search and destroy or something like that to yeah. where when you get killed in this particular round of this particular match, at the end of it, you'll get to respawn. Yeah. But that you have to wait around for a few minutes for that for that however long that round is going to last for that match. Yeah. And then you get your, to come back. Yeah. But that's you, your only like real penalty. If you if you play free for all Call of Duty like I do, to where just when you get killed, you respawn as soon as you can hit the button. But yeah, that that that's what I did. I was I was like this super super careful sneaky guy. I, I didn't. Uh, what's the word? Camp. I wasn't necessarily a camper. Mm. I was just like. I was the guy that was like, what are you doing over here <laughs> behind this trash can? Nobody ever hides behind. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> well, like the, uh, Nobody's behind this trash can. There's not any type of player that actually bothers me with Call of Duty. Uh, yeah. um, and I, I lean into the fact that I'm really impatient. And I, I like to just play the game with the fuck it attitude. Because if I'm if I'm destroying everybody, that's not exciting to me. Yeah. I I love instances to where there's a whole bunch of people and we're all shooting at each other at, at each other at different directions and it's just chaos. And maybe I get a couple kills out of that. Yeah. That makes my fucking dick hard. <laughs> to just be in a chaotic situation and I was able to compose myself enough to maybe get two or three people. Very so that happens so rarely. That the math just doesn't even me make sense for me to like even mention it. It's so rare, it's insane. But when it does happen, I'm like, today was a fucking good day. Like it was chaos, and then this particular situation where everybody was lined up, and I maybe almost got away. Even that <laughs> excites me. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, it's. Uh, it's so it's so interesting though to listen to you talk about how you approach games. There's only one other person that I have in my life that talks about games the same way you do, and it's my buddy Mark. Uh, we lived in the same apartment complex uh, in Michigan, and you know he kind of feels the same way of like, well, you know, fuck this game. I'm gonna break this game and I'm gonna destroy it and. I'm going to win and show this game Sue's boss. And I'm just like, fucking really? I mean, like, like I said, I, I don't even guess. I, I don't really think of it like that as much as it's just like, uh, yeah, it's the challenge. I mean, that's really what it is. Like, I, I, I do get a lot of, I get that little serotonin boost for um, the but, but, uh, well, I, I'll, and mastery. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely a completionist as far as like, but I mean, the truth is even in real life, um, I'm a little bit scared to say this on your podcast, but I'll go ahead and say it anyway. Um, people have gotten me to do some really stupid things by telling me that I can't. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I hear that and I think to myself, I, I hear somebody say, well, you, you can't do this or, or that or whatever for any reason. I'm, I'm like challenge accepted. I mean, I'm on it. I'm on it right then. Probably. Yeah. I, I've been talked into more dumb things. And it, it's not even a tactic people tend to, to actually try to use a, a psychologically on me very often. But I have to say it is, it is my kryptonite. I, would, I think I've been lucky in the way that, like, for one, if I just don't want to do something because it doesn't seem like it would have a good outcome, I'm just like, I just don't want to. You know, but nobody's ever really manipulated me in a way of like trying to like, oh, well, you know, you probably couldn't do it anyways. And I would just have an honest assessment like right then and there in conversation without getting upset whether I could or whether I couldn't. 
And in the few cases where I've been having a conversation with somebody that would like try to like almost talk me out of it, like a, maybe even a passion project of like, oh, you know, the chances of you being really sick. Well, then you're just a shitty friend. Because <laughs> I want to do this one thing, you're going to try to talk me out of it? Yeah. Oh, why? Because you're a fucking manager at 7-Eleven? <laughs> and you got life figured out? What? Yeah. I'm going to listen to you? Fuck you. Unfollow from Facebook. Go fuck yourself, bro. What? <laughs> you know, uh, I very rarely have ever encountered those people, so I, I, I consider myself lucky. But like I said, if I just don't want to do something or it doesn't, I don't have any interest in that. Like if somebody's like, oh, you bet you can't jump from here to here. Like if I was younger, I'd be like, probably not. Yep, you, you got me figured out. Yeah, I, I've, I've just, I don't think I've ever backed down nearly. Really? I mean, maybe me. Yeah, there, there have been, there have been a few occasions, but uh, generally speaking, and, and it's not just a matter of somebody saying, "I, I bet you, uh, I bet you, you can't do this." It's, it's more like just, just matter. Like if I feel like it's sincere, that's when it hits me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not easily tricked. But, uh, uh, you know, there are smarter people out there that I, I most definitely sure have used that to, uh, to uh, uh, motivate me. Uh, because it is. It's, it's a button of mine. All you, all you have to do is say I can't do something and, and appear, at least appear sincere about it. And I'm going to be like, oh, yeah? Well, and, and I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it's it's not even necessarily a matter of proving anybody wrong. It's a matter of proving to myself that I could take something all the way to mm, the wall. Okay. You know, to take do you take something, you know, I, I think there is something to be said, especially in this life. Um there's so many things going on in this life. This this life is so complicated, and it it, it just depends on your social status and where you're at is is how much more complicated it is. Yeah, and that's true. And for all of that, we can pick something out and say, "I'm gonna," just because I want to, not because you know my family needs me to put food on the table or whatever. But I'm going to pick out this thing and just be the absolute best at it that I can be. Um, I think there's some, I, I do think that there's something honorable about that. Not necessarily to say, for instance, you know, when I was, I remember being in, in chess when I was younger at 13 and I was like, I want to be a grandmaster. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's pretty lofty goal. And then, then you start playing chess. And then if you're really studious, like I was, mm -hmm. you go to the library and this is back when people used libraries, mm -hmm. that place where they had the books. <laughs> we don't talk about those places much anymore. But I remember, I remember pulling books out during summer. Like I'm a 15 year old, 16 year old kid. Mm -hmm. I'm going and pulling books out and studying that just so that I can go down the local coffee shop and crush some random hippies uh at chess and i i mean I, it wasn't really just about them it was you know at the time like i said i was like i'm gonna be a grandmaster so i spent hours and hours and hours going through these old you know 1970s books and nom nomenclature on chess uh to to hone my game and I, I continue every once in a while i don't like i've never put in that much study since then but every once in a while yeah i'll, I'll spend an hour on youtube to learn a new opening or learn tricks or traps in the opening i know yeah but i only ever borrowed a book once from some or from like a library i encountered some person randomly out in the world and we started talking about chess. He he brought it up, too. It was really weird. The conversation, I didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> it just seemed really off, and I didn't know how to put my finger on it. And uh, But anyways, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, chess, you got to start. Uh, he mentioned something about studying moves. And that never occurred to me that you could study a particular hobby or sport thing up until that point like really yeah like oh there are books on chess and i remember like 
getting it and like taking it home and looking at it. I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, yeah. Because this this book wasn't big, but it was it was very basic. And I was like, dude, if this is the basic stuff, I am so fucking ignorant. I'm so ignorant. You got to get the like getting into chess. You uh, first off, you you've got to get the right books. There's a lot of there's a lot of books on chess. And here's the thing: chess is cool because there's a lot of games out there that can take you. For instance, um, you get a Monopoly. You can even do it competitively, and you mm-hmm. can spend uh, you know at the lower levels of play playing with your family and friends. You're going to spend two or three hours, three or four hours playing a game Monopoly. At the yeah. higher levels of play, they'll spend even longer. Um, with chess, they basically said, hey, we see that a whole bunch of different personality types like this we ought to put in. <laughs> so then they, you know, because all the games at first, they were like, send your move in a letter, right? And then, you know, the internet came out, knowledge came out, and they're like, oh, that doesn't work anymore. People can just cheat and basically start running stuff through engines and whatever. And then they were like, so now let's play timed games. Like, that's what I all I play. I used to love any kind of uh, speed of chess, and now, like, I play five-minute, three-minute. I even play one-minute. Play one-minute blitz chess. And That's insane. It really is insane. And, and, and to be any good at that, yeah, you still have to do the studying. It's like uh to to uh to be good at one minute three minute or five minute <coughs> your real your real talent has to be i have a strategy the entire time and it doesn't even matter if it's a good strategy you have to have one because if you don't you won't come up with the idea to make a move in a, in the in the right amount of time I only play, I only have the patience now. Uh, my patience for that game went way out the window. Like, if I sit and play a two-hour game with a friend, well, I better be drinking beer and we're also watching a movie or something. And having snacks. Exactly. Something like, there's probably a couple of things that I'm doing because I'm not going to be playing that game for two hours. You're going to be playing it for two hours. I'm going to be playing it for about 15 minutes. And we can talk about chess, too. <laughs> we can talk about chess for two hours, but I'm going to spend 15 minutes on the actual game. <laughs> Because I don't have the patience anymore. Because I'm ADD, mm. I don't have the patience anymore to uh, to play these long, drawn out uh, uh, versions. Of the I game. like to do everything in small doses as well. Most of my most of my gaming stuff is never more than an hour anymore. Even with stuff I really like, uh, Call of Duty, or and I just started another playthrough of Cyberpunk. I get into the world for a little bit, and that's all I'm doing. And then when I'm done, I'm just done. I got other things I got to do. And that's good. I mean, well, I, I mean, the truth is, you know, kind of, kind of like looking at this poker thing. Of course, I, like I said, I, I, I may not play. Hmm. I like again. Hmm. So just. This is me being depressed on, on Brandon's podcast here. But yeah. Like, <laughs> Jesus! I mean, uh, that was one, that's been one of my favorite games. I've been making money at that game since I was twenty five years old. I'm not saying I won't, but I will say that right now I'll never make another. I'll, I I don't plan on making uh, another run at it professionally. And uh, as for right now, I may not pick up the game again ever again. Yeah. In fact, I've been thinking about dropping most games i probably won't ever drop blitz chess in the morning that's how i drink my coffee i read my space news Mm -hmm. or my science news and i drink my coffee and i play my blitz chess and that's pretty much how i start every day and i haven't really seen anything destructive about that seems like it's actually beneficial for Mm. me yeah yeah because i can go through the game and then after the game's played it doesn't matter if i win or lost after the games are done i go into the computer analysis and it'll tell you some interesting facts it'll say how many uh inaccuracies you had how many mistakes you had and how many uh uh what's the what's the other word it's even worse blunders so to give you those three things hmm. never really on at least on light chest it doesn't tell you the good stuff right it doesn't put like an exclamation mark and say good move <laughs> i hear they do that on chess.com probably ought to go to them it'll be a le- little bit less sadistic hmm. but uh, according to after I play these blitz games, if I see a whole bunch of blunders and mistakes, 
like I can look and see that I probably need to be more careful that day. Like, I mean, everywhere, like driving. Mm. uh, Because you just weren't present. I, you know, it's funny. The the brain goes, uh, the brain has so many different cycles. And one thing that I've learned is, is that there's so many different, there's so many different variables that affect how well your brain is working on any specific day. You could have a nutrient deficiency is probably very common, especially amongst people like me that I'm like, yeah, I ate some cookies today. I'm good. Um, there's nutrient deficiencies. There's how much exercise you've been getting. There's how long you've been doing a specific thing. Uh, all these things are, are, uh, uh, There's all kinds of physiological things happening in your body. You eat, and and a lot of people don't know this, Mm -hmm. but if you eat and then do something competitive, you will do worse if your body is processing food because you're, that is actually taking up. It's a resource that's getting used, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually taking up brain power to process your food, and as a result, you will not play as well. I don't care if it's a game that you're even physically active at. That includes at the poker table. The biggest thing as far as nutrients stuff is concerned or just nourishment is just just water. My water intake, once I increase that, how much mental clarity I had, how much better my insides felt, uh, you know, for digestion and just your overall um, use of your organs. Like everything got better. Yeah. My sleep, everything. My, my skin was nicer no more dry flakes or anything and i was just like blown away with just water and i'm like fuck imagine if i was actually eating food that wasn't packaged all the time oh, i know i i know i mean that that that's the truth of it like i i i eat like dog shit it's no good it's no good for me i don't know if i ate better uh uh, I know if I ate better, I'd just generally be a, a healthier, happier person. Shit, you know, to be honest with you, if I ate better and quit smoking, I, I'd probably be in a long-term relationship. And those are two things that I have a hard time ever giving up for anything. And those are two things that are like deal breakers for like half the, half the relationships I I want to, or that actually look like they're starting to go somewhere and they're like, well, yeah, I had a good time, but you're a smoker. And I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm not sure if I want to quit. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, the truth. I definitely would never consider being with a smoker. Like, not even, I just don't like it. Just, yeah. I don't hate it. Like, and the weird thing for it's me It's understandable. Is, like, I, I my grandma smoked. So whenever. F- I smell like Winston 100s. I always just think, have happy thoughts of my grandma. Right. Always like sneaking me money to go to the store when I was a little kid to go get her a pack of cigarettes. Because back then, nobody cared. And they knew my grandma was Josie, and she came into the D Brothers store on Jefferson. And they're like, oh, my grandma wants cigarettes, because I wasn't smoking those fucking things. I was like seven years old. And that's just what you did. Um... And then my uh, my uncle Ed, he smoked uh, Newport 100s, and they have a particular smell. But I always relate happy feeling or happy uh, memories with that, because whenever I hung out with him, uh, I would also I would always smell that cigarette smell. But it was always video games, going over to his place, and always right. pizza or Chinese food or some like burgers and fries. Right, it's always yeah. happy. Feelings and emotions associated with those smells. Yeah. But in my personal life, like, uh, with my car and my bathroom and my bedroom, I keep things pretty clean. And um, a part of that is the smell. And just with, like, uh, clothing that's saturated or somebody's cigarette breath, it gives me the opposite of a boner. Yeah. You know? So... (laughs) Uh, but anyways, going back to the gaming thing, what was the next thing after Atari where you seen like the games like level up? Just talking about video games right now. What was the next game that you played of, of any age to where you're like, oh, wow, this thing is fucking nuts. I mean, it's like as far as game systems, uh, just individual video games. Something that you played that just really—I mean, really—I was—I was—I was just hooked to—I uh, was hooked to all 
video game. I mean, it, it played Atari until Atari 2400 came out. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what it was called. Uh, Atari 2400 came out, and I was playing games on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ColecoVision. ColecoVision. And then there was, there was what, Sega, and then Sega Genesis. And during that time, I think there was also, uh, oh, no, 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 Nintendo. I'm came sorry. out in 1982, yeah. 84. Yeah, something like that. Uh, it was the Nintendo systems, the 16-bit, the Super Nintendo, uh, mm-hmm. Nintendo 64. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then you know, uh, before Nintendo, there was Sony, and then Sony, PlayStation 2 and 3. Yeah, there was PlayStation. Game Boy. I mean, I, I pretty much had every... Uh, I pretty much had every system, but it, like I said, it really wasn't just video games. I mean, we were out... Like, when I was a kid, we were... We were, you know, outside like the teams. But of course, by the time I was like 14, 15, I'd had like pretty much my entire fill. I'd had my lifetime fill of team sports. You know, mm. <laughs> you only have so much bad luck with coaches. I mean, when you're that young, it really has very little to do with you and mostly to do with your coach. <clears throat> And we just had the coaches that were like, just well, you guys just go out there and have fun. It doesn't matter if you win. You know, I got tired of hearing those exact words. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. I got real tired of hearing that because I was like, I'm playing to compete. Like, uh, it, it did. It turned me off team sports and uh, it, it totally turned me off team sports until I was older. And even now. I don't really like to watch. I will watch it occasionally, but I don't like football. I don't like basketball. I don't like any team sport, really, uh, all that much. And and the funny thing is I love every individual one-man sport, whether it's a sport or whether or not it's just some kind of like – it could be chess. I don't care. It could be any kind of game. If two people are competing, then the onus of win or loss is all on the one person. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I can't tell you. I'm not a normal sports person in terms of, like like you just said, I don't care about baseball, hockey, football, basketball. I like boxing, kickboxing, Me MMA. Too. And and uh, the interesting thing is they're all one man, well, two yeah. man, two man sports. Well, one I, man competing. I mean, you do have a team in the sense of like outside of the spotlight like maybe your doctor nutritionist sure trainer uh, cardio trainer uh you know pad work and all this other stuff uh maybe your resistance training and all that other shit but it's going to be yeah, your ass gonna... in there nobody else's ass is yeah. on the line yeah you're... maybe their paycheck is but not their fucking not their brain right yeah you're not in a vacuum yeah, uh, you, you you didn't create yourself independent independently at the higher le- at the highest levels of nearly any of those sports. Yeah, uh, although some people had their starts that way, they didn't stay there. Mm. Um, you know, because you can even look like in uh, like the MMA. I remember uh, 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 Kumbe. Uh, I can't remember what his name was. He got his start kicking. He was this big burly black dude and he got to start uh kicking people's asses in street fights right around the time the mma oh kimbo slice kimbo slice that's a, a kimbe yeah. kimbe <laughs> whatever his name was yeah kimbo slice uh and uh i mean you know like so you do you have you have people like that that just basically started out and they were just you know they were just Framer jammer had the natural talent and uh but even them uh, yeah, he didn't do well once he, he started to come across people that actually knew how to fight. He no, got, he got yeah. tapped out right away. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't have the unfortunately the technical skills. He he couldn't overcome. Uh, he had the natural raw talent, but he didn't have the ability to adapt to yeah. to uh, take in new information in time. I think for him to actually become yeah. perfect. Because the truth is, I think if he'd been maybe a little bit younger, a little bit more. Uh, susceptible to yeah more pliable mentally. Right. yeah susceptible being trained um, he, he probably would have gone a lot further one of the things you said earlier though uh, at least the path I think you were going to go on when you mentioned that like the onus is on the one person that's competing against the other person I can't tell you how many fucking stupid arguments I would hear about people like oh who's the better you know basketball player this person or that person and then well, like this person, you know, does this, and like, well, how many rings does this person have for the playoffs? And it's just like you're the whole team is fucking competing. Like, 
I just don't like the dirty politics and math with like combining a whole team because there's. I agree. There's some aspects to where clearly you have your star players that get more time than everybody else, and they're way better. And that's where all the fucking salary is going is to like these few people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like it's, it's very yeah. There's it's all kinds of unbalance. A, a lot of like team sports as well. Sport. There's a lot of start and stop. Which I just don't... I, I want things to keep going. I got fucking stuff I got to do. Like, you know, and I don't know. Maybe that just makes me sound like an asshole. But, like, baseball and <laughs> hockey and fucking football, it's just too long. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a whole day thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you, I, and I, that's the truth is that I, I really do like the idea. But, you know, in, in, in all actuality, and I know uh, people are probably going to highly take offense to this, but... Uh, no, offend them. Well, you know, you're talking about how everything is a game. Uh, I personally, as far as entertainment, and I'm not saying it's, it, it's because it delights me, but I pay more attention to the war in Ukraine than I do on any, any uh, group sporting event and... But the funny thing is, it's technically for the same emotions. You know what I'm oh, saying? This I mean, team versus that team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's war games. It's it's exactly what it is. It's it's war games. I'm very I'm, I'm very interested, not delighted, mind you. Once again, I'm not delighted to watch it. More like shocked, shocked, mortified, and afraid of where it all goes. But I do watch it for the same reason. You know, I mean, I I, I basically secretly root for root for ukraine but the i mean one of the main reasons i'm doing that is just because they're the underdog and they really have no chance in the long run outside of outside of uh getting help from the US and <laughs> getting it yeah it, it, once once they start failing in their ability to start bringing in new ammunitions because the truth is financially they'd have lost this game a long time ago and i'm kind of surprised that to be honest with you i'm kind of surprised we're still playing the game because i'm not sure exactly what our end game is except as to say um we are putting our foot down but at a certain point i i think you do have to ask yourself the question how long because your foot can't be down indefinitely over a situation like this it really can't um, people get tired of it they get sick of it and, yeah and unfortunately like you know with somebody like putin in office he he, he he's the one that basically has ultimate stay in his in his country mm. until the people actually start revolting to the point where they're not afraid to be killed for it then they're always going to be for the war over there because what choice do they have? Yeah. Right? <laughs> you stand up over there. I mean, it is basically like a, a neo-dictatorship. It's Yeah, it's 100% a hundred, hundred, hundred percent of dictatorship. I, I mean, mean, when all the... Kind of, kind of like I just said, there's no such thing as an election with 87% approval rating. That's not even a real thing. It's really not. We know that over here. We get we get two guys running against each other, and, and people are certain one guy or the other guy is going to win. And what is it when it usually comes out? 52 percent they're two percent five percent and some people are like it's a landslide they were 55 56 percent better 57 my goodness that's a landslide seven percent seven percent of a break even i mean come on that's not uh 87 percent sounds like they just threw 24 percent in there 23 percent just to <laughs> just to uh make it look like there was actually an election yeah, that's a whole level. That's like a whole other level of of game, though, that is operating on so many different dimensions that I can't even pretend to. <laughs> it's a game of life, you know for sure. Well, I mean, and, and and you know, games like that. You're talking about. Uh, you're talking about a man who he, he doesn't he doesn't have any ethical or moral dilemmas uh, psychologically. He's not he's not a, he's not afraid to use anything at his disposal except what would actually get him kicked out or murdered. Yeah. Well, I was gonna even just say any any of country or government like if you're if you're looking at politics, weapons, war, finance. It's all so fucking like the grayscales of each of those things like run into each other and you don't know what when where one thing starts and ends yeah. before it's a whole other industry. Yeah. I mean, you know, kind of, kind of like with the spy thing as far as like ethics. 
um, we created the spy. We created, you know, our our CIA. Yeah. In efforts basically combat the other evils in the world, but I mean, let's face it, we've seen our CIA do some of the dude the stories. Yeah. That are all verified. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, and and, and all of those stories ex- express the same sentiment: is that we created an evil to battle an evil. And we got what we asked for to a certain extent because you can't create an evil with no consequence to fight an evil and not have evil in your state. Like it's not it's not something that's possible. And unfortunately, you know, it's it's difficult to even say like, I don't think you could have a country nowadays without some kind of a secret service. You couldn't have one. Um. The, because the the countries that were interested in what you had do have them, yeah, and so it's it's like a it's a necessary evil. Unfortunately, it's 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 a very spooky idea to yeah. Flirt. That gets that gets a, a morally, ethically, when you start talking about that stuff. At least in the limited conversations that I have, you find yourself making excuses for like, ah, oh, well, you know, everybody does it. That and, and, you, it's f- just, and you find a lot of arguments like the trolley, the, the trolley car argument, and the greater good argument. Mm-hmm. You, you get into a lot of arguments like that. In fact, I would imagine that most of their most of their great arguments and debates within the within these companies have to do with the trolley car argument. Where you have, you know what I'm talking about? No, I do not. It's it's like an old uh, phil- philosophical question. Um, you're <laughs> it, it, it has many different versions, but it basically goes something like this: You're on a trolley car. You can turn it one way or the other way, but the brakes are out or whatever, right? If you uh, if you do nothing, everyone on the trolley car dies. There's there's 40 people in a trolley car. If you turn the trolley car, or uh, if you if you turn the trolley car to the left, then there's all these people tied to the tracks, and you're gonna kill them. So either way, you're gonna kill some people. So what do you do? And there's all kinds of different variations of this question. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's the trolley car argument. It's kind of like um, I think they were making this decision, or this came up in conversation with AI relating to vehicles. Uh, would uh, like if you put like AI that's active in like in uh, one of these electric vehicles, and it's faced with the dilemma of hitting one person or many under certain circumstances, like what would be the better outcome? You know, or if you're if you're on a runaway vehicle and you're gonna kill everybody in the vehicle if you go off the cliff, or if you fucking go off to the side here, you're gonna hit a few people, but that's all that's going to die because whatever you're going to run into is going to stop your vehicle. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it it gets in some really hairy. Well, that automatically makes the situation totally fucked, but I feel like it makes everything morally gray because you have to, you have to take responsibility and onus that like, most likely you're going to probably choose the other person and not yourself to die, especially if you have other people with you. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, uh, locality, locality is, locality is a very normal. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of even how our politics work though. The more local you are, the more interested in, in, uh, in you, we are politically. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, but the truth is, you know, that, you know, that kind of like, I hate to bring them up, but, you know, going back to Trump with the America first thing, basically mm. you're, yeah, it's an interesting, when you say America first, what you're saying is we're, we devalue America, uh, we devalue other people more than we, you know, as far as, as far as that goes, we, we value Americans more than we value anybody else. Mm. And that's, that's. You know, unfortunately, that's not the correct answer. That's a, a emotional. That's an emotional answer. Uh, I'm saying something like "America First" is basically saying I'm going to take care of you guys. It's emotional manipulation. <laughs> it is. It's bad, and uh, it's locality. Um, we're we're interested in what's happening here. Us versus them mentality. Yeah. Sometimes I get into these conversations with people when they when they're like, "Why are you into space news?" And I'm like, "Because these advances they advance our world." 
and they say, well, I'm just more interested. I'm, I, I think it's more important to know what's going on right here. And I'm saying, I think it's important for both. Like, I'm happy to talk about, <laughs> depending on what time period we're talking about, you know, I'm happy to talk about the cotton gin, you know, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> whatever your name is. Or, but, you know, in the same way, you know, yeah, I, I take great interest in, in things like science news because I, I don't want to just... I don't want to just see America do great. I, I want to see the American, or excuse me, I want to see civilization uh, move forward. I want to I want to see civilization as a whole uh, thrive. And space news is real interesting for that because you know, kind of like Elon Musk, I believe we uh, we're on a planet with a limited amount of resources. And even if we stop producing, yeah. Right now, even if we roll back <laughs> real slow, like, you know, I, I've been watching every, I, I started really noticing this. It's been freaking me out. What? Every couple of years, I would say uh, this, some kind of conversation come up and, and I'd say, yeah, there's, there's X number of people on the world. And they'd say, no, there's not. There's more than that. And they'd say, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, no, that's, that's what I read. This is only like a couple of years ago. And I'd say, well, check it again. And I'd check it again and be like, oh, damn that doubled and then it doubled again and then it doubled again and i don't even know we were at 4.5 4. and i think we're at like 6.4 i know i think i believe we're just under 8 billion now oh my gosh see what i'm saying yeah. like it's insane and this happens like every couple of years yeah. but here's the thing we're on a rock with resources and some of the stuff is growing and it's using the same water and that's all cool the whole life cycle thing mm -hmm. that's that's fine a lot of this live this this uh uh livelihood on the planet well yeah that that's that's something that we can return but you know things like gold things like and we need it right gold silver all these things are uh, any type of mineral any basically. type of metal it's it's on the planet but after we use a lot of this stuff we dispose of it it goes in a landfill um, you know like using the gold plating to create uh, anything, electronics electronics yeah. anything on your computer um, a lot of that stuff ends up in a landfill never to be seen from again it's just lost and, and so a lot of this stuff is pretty much just gone going to be a long long time before anybody figures out or can get pockets of this well the other thing too is like some of the stuff that doesn't even make it to a landfill it physically degrades like rusts away or fucking whatever and unless you know about alchemy or something and how to fucking turn you know something like uh what's that star trek thing that people use to just make shit yeah yeah unless you have that technology i don't know how to fucking well that's what i'm saying we and we you know well, man, let's face it that's that's probably the like even in Star Trek, that was a little far fetched. I mean, they were like, "Oh yeah, we just synthesize our own food." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Neat. What are you synthesizing? You know, I always wanted to ask them that question: Is what what the hell materials are you synthesizing out of? Because you have to fill that up, right? Because you can't create something out of nothing. I mean, the truth is, you know, the the human race as a whole is going to fail if we don't uh if we don't get out and start mining some asteroids and figuring out eventually how to get out of our solar system because i got a feeling from what i've been hearing and reading that our solar system is kind of shit yeah i mean we have a lot of good basic you know we had the good basic uh components but the truth is i mean it's not that great here like we don't have a lot of options when we we're settling on mars that's kind of fucked up. You know, if there was... A desolate place. Ah, it, you know, I, I'm kind of wondering why we didn't at least try for one of the moons, like the moon on Titan, I hear, it's, or, uh, or one of the moons that goes around, uh, what is it, Saturn? Yeah, there's like 64 moons or something. I don't know. Anyway, we we, we have the only habitable planet. Yeah, in the is, Goldilocks zone. In Yeah, in, in our solar system. And we don't even know if we can get out of our solar system yet we don't we don't really have the technology yet to to go further so we're gonna have to like get on like get on it now if we're gonna do anything cool if we're gonna get out and i'm gonna ask you about that after we take a <laughs> piss break because my bladder's right. starting to hurt so all right all right all right uh looks like we're back in it now oh hang on let me close this window uh, all right.
this thing was fucking unraveling itself. There we go. So what? Uh, where do we leave off on? We were talking about what outer space and alcoholics. Yeah, and games. But we weren't recording then because I wanted you to finish eating. Because <laughs> last time people complained that we were both eating on the podcast. Too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I kept apologizing because I think you went away to use the bathroom and then go out and smoke last time or something. And I was in here just eating the whole time. And I kept apologizing. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just so hungry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to apologize. I'm just going to eat for you guys. We'll try to do it, like, away from the mic because it's, like, really loud. Like, if you see this, like, watch. Just chew. That's picking up that from that far away. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, it fucking hears everything. <laughs> so I was I was showing David here the uh, the audio device. Every time you would close Still his no jaw, care. every time you would close his jaws, the thing would spike, almost redlining. <laughs> here I will try to. Ah, right, you're good, man. Uh, I'll eat this one up. Well, I'll let you finish. I'll talk. And uh, I'm going to dial yours down. Let's see, half hour. What? Half hour longer, you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. All, all the podcasts I can do. Okay. No, yeah. Here, I'll take those. Let me... Five dollars. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> all right. You gave those to me. That's five dollars now. <laughs> Sound like your no. drunk friend over here. Give me back my beer. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> so you were you were talking about earlier with uh, you would be um, you would be sad if we never got uh, off this planet somewhere else. I would. Yeah. Do you really think that's going to happen? Like in all seriousness. Yeah. I don't think we have. Uh, here, here's the thing. I don't think we have a choice, man. We don't have a choice. Look, we started out. What was it? I don't know. Two. <laughs> Let, let's just let's just say for what for whatever reason okay. we started out as a colony it doesn't matter i i think i said the last the last time i thought that the earth was 6.5 billion now you're saying 8 billion and for all of that scientists way back in the <laughs> 20 years ago were saying that if we were x x amount over which we are yeah that we we would begin running out of resources. we're already running out of resources we're already look. We we are an advanced society, and we have very cool things that nobody in the past has ever had. Yeah, and this is a flash in the pan because it's never going to happen again like this. But here's the weird part: hmm. is you have these really cool electronics, and yeah. your house is shrinking, and your car is shrinking, and everything you own is shrinking, and it's getting smaller and smaller because. Those are all the resources that you can afford. And um, everybody has, usually, mostly, mm-hmm. everybody has some resources. But their quality of life is actually going to go down and down and down because, I mean, math. There's a limited number of resources. There's only so much gold in the world, which means there's only so many electronics in the world, which means there's only so many things. And, and so even the price of these things is... Uh, they're shrinking, they're getting smaller, so we can continue to uh, <clears throat> buy them, afford them, et cetera, et cetera. We can run out. Yeah. Um, even right now, you're looking at this war, you know, looking at this war in Ukraine, and I'll be real brief about it because I'm not trying to get into the war. I'm just kind of making a point. Yeah. All of, or all of these um, motherboards that are going into these new, incredibly expensive cars that now nobody can afford, like, I swear, man, half the planet's fixing to be on foot. Seriously, half the fucking planet's fixing to be on foot. Um, they're getting there. They're get, I'm watching it. I'm watching more and more people on bikes and skateboards, man. Um they're all made from all these motherboards are made from um, neon gas neon gas is what's uh, one of the things at least from what I understand that's actually in Ukraine and they're they are oh yeah right so this war isn't even about you know Nazis in Ukraine and Russia's Russia's worried Nazis gonna come in I mean obviously that was a bunch of nonsense anyway and any, anybody that doesn't know any better you know that they're idiots but yeah <laughs> sorry 
but uh, it's it's always over resources and and territory and this is over neon gas and he who controls neon gas is going to be controlling a, a whole lot uh, as far as our technological advancements go because neon gas is a limited resource and we're only going to make be able to make so much of it and we're going to start running out what are we going to do like and here's the funny thing is once you start going into these asteroid belts um once you start looking at asteroids dude there's a asteroid out there called psych 16 and uh, i don't want to get quoted wrong here so i'm going to under quote that 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 particular asteroid is worth uh it has all kinds of metals on it gold um uh, it's believed to have gold iron silver <coughs> maybe platinum i don't i don't know but anyway it's it's got all these precious resources four quadrillion dollars on one asteroid four quadrillion dollars would clear all national debt we could start over i mean of course that it wouldn't work like that we couldn't just all agree to take that down and reset the clock yeah um wouldn't work like that but i mean unless there was some serious agreements in between some countries and you know unif- that's not yeah happen. unification uh, processes and working together and things but if we that's kind of my point is if we don't get our shit together and start working together we're all dead we're going to yeah. run out of shit here, and it's either going to go back to a Walking Dead scenario, or uh, this just straight up Stone Ages, or even scarier, it's just going to be the elite out in space, and that's really spooky. What's that movie with Matt Damon? <coughs> Where they were on like... Exactly. The, yeah. And and that is an that is a real possibility where basically the entire Earth turns to shit and all, and the elite were the only ones that could afford to go to space and they went and they created their own environment there and they just had and they were basically became this like uh, Earth became this toxic dump of industrialization and and keeping that thing up above afloat mm. um, and and we can get to that point and the only way that we don't get to that point. Is we go out there, and and we do just like we've done at every other point in history. We explore, we travel, we explore, we return with the goods. And in this case, we know that those goods are out there. It's just this is just like any other time in history. This is the most challenging time. And so, if we don't get out there and uh, basically start cleaning up our own galaxy and and, and uh, reclaiming, res- or I say reclaiming, but claim- claiming these resources so that we can continue growing and thriving, we will begin to regress. And this whole, uh, you know, uh, it, it's real scary to think that, you know, we basically got to the, the height of our good times and then it was just wheeling backwards from there until we're all the way back to something that looks like, you know, ancient Greece and movies in a movies <laughs> become movies become plays with people with big masks and uh <laughs> you know ampli- amphitheaters for sound and shit like that because <laughs> because we basically used up everything we had and we couldn't stop the train that was the, mm. the train of business that was was coming and we didn't basically uh have anybody around think about it to say Hey, there's X amount. I mean, we need we need somebody to basically uh, start creating a tally, saying what do we have left that we know of. <laughs> the problem with that though is like everybody's gonna be want to be deceptive about it. You know what I mean? Of course they are, and 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 the reason for that is because we're not all on the same team. Yeah, and if we don't ever have a team. Uh, uh, Team, team human civilization, say, if we don't ever create that, we're fucked. I mean, uh, some people are worried about, you know, this world unification thing and its ramifications for what that might mean for different religions. I'm saying if we don't if we don't start uniting now, like I'm, I'm almost for anything that says united something, something. UN, I'm absolutely 100 percent for it, 100 percent by it. We have to start accounting for the whole thing. If we're not accounting for the whole thing, then we have half the people screwing the planet over in one way and the other half trying to fight them and eventually going to war with them. And that's a lot of what we have right now is a bunch of nonsense where, um, uh, you know, people are still claiming these fights are 
over this or that. And and let's face it, uh, we're in the real world. These fights are always over resources. These 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 fights are over comfort and sur- and survival. It's it's like whenever I think about humanity, and we, I get into talks like this, my brain has been creeping into an area of like. Maybe we would all be better off if we were plugged in the Matrix so we couldn't cause any more harm. <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> I don't know that we're... For as much harm as we're causing, I look at... You can... Like for... You know, this is kind of argument my mom goes through and she's real religious. Okay. And she says, the world's just going to shit. It's just getting worse. And... I, I look over the timeline and I say, well, I don't know how you can account for that in 60 years, but what I'm looking at is over the last 500 years, we <laughs> well, li- life actually got really comfortable and there's a whole bunch less war, generally speaking. Uh, there's less war and, and the war is more civil and we have rules about how to keep the war civil. The ultimate consequence, though is far more dire than it ever has been before in history. Yeah. Uh, And obviously I'm talking about nuclear weapons. They didn't have those in the Civil War or a couple hundred years before that or a thousand years before that. Yeah. And that's a type of damage that when that's done... It's permanent. Well, yeah, mostly. Yeah, it, it's mostly permanent. And, That's you, and, be real and you're bad. right about that. And 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 the hope, the hope here is that that is uh, that what happened with Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, it basically ends up being the great deterrent um, to keep us away from the Fermi paradox and the Great Filter, basically. Mm-hmm. Fermi paradox being, you know, if if aliens have been around. Well, why don't we see them? That's the Fermi paradox, and uh, there's all kinds of ideas for that. And one of the ideas is the Great Filter. The Great Filter basically is the concept that maybe there have been other civilizations that have come up, and um, they came to a point in their civilization that they were not able to conquer, and thus they were conquered by themselves. Mm. Um, whether that was pollution. Uh, that pollution overtook the planet or whether that was uh, that they figured out how to break the atom or or whatever reason Mm. but we've got a lot of those and 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 on the plus side of our civilization i see just as many groups fighting it as i see fucking it up and so that gives me a little bit of hope that we're yeah we're swinging our responsibility uh we're, we're we're swinging it back to ourselves and saying, you know, we can't just keep mindlessly doing all of this stuff that we're doing or, you know, yeah, it's just one day everybody runs out and everything becomes super expensive. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the gold thing. I mean, the more gold is used, the more gold's going to cost. There has, a, there has to be a point where you say, well, where are we going to get more gold? <laughs> If we're all going to have electronics, where are we going to get more gold for the electric? Either that or we have to come up with something really crafty. Yeah. And there's just not a whole lot of resources on our planet for us to be crafty with right now, as far as that kind of thing goes. Um, and, and, and I picture bigger things. Like, uh, what was that? Uh, they created a whole game around this to go back to the games. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? Um, sphere something. The idea is basically that um, uh, this was also like a type 2, type 3 civilization idea. Okay. Um, I think it was actually a type 2. A type 2 civil, like we would be considered a type 1 civilization. A type 2 civilization would be able to harness the power of their own sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are, I think, we're pretty much a type 1 civilization. We've gotten ourselves... Uh, well, it's in, able to harness all the energy from your own planet, which we do not. Yeah, but we're, we are getting we are getting there. I mean, like, we're, we're doing all kinds of different I think energies. Michi Akaku said that we're a type 0, just for the simple fact of, like, uh, inner core's energy, all the minerals have been mined, and so on and so forth. So it's like we still have very basic hurdles. 
to uh, to go over before we can um, start wrapping shit around the sun to <laughs> absorb its yeah, energy. Or exactly. Whatever, I which mean, yeah. are Dyson spheres? Yeah, Dyson sphere. That's what that is. Yeah. Um, um, and then everything after that just becomes fucking science fiction. Like, type 3 is like, is apparently as far as it goes by the one person that came up with all this. And then type 4 is just nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Type four, type t- even type three. The description of the type three uh, civilization was it's like all the stars in your galaxy. Demigods. Yeah, the people. You, yeah, your your citizens basically start becoming something that appear more like demigods. But I mean, that, that's the truth of it. Is if we don't start figuring, and I think we can. Like we have, uh, we have a society that's smart enough to uh, to begin to do some really crazy awesome stuff you know we just deflected an asteroid not too long ago which means and and there were two reasons for deflecting that asteroid I think okay one of them was to see whether or not we could repel a uh, an asteroid that was coming in to uh, stop an extinction event which is absolutely fantastic I love that another reason why they wanted to see if they could deflect that asteroid, was there's an idea in asteroid mining, which is that when something gets to be so big, um, instead of you trying to get on this thing and farm it, you crash land it somewhere. You change its trajectory and you crash land it somewhere. Oh, so in an ocean or fucking... Or Mars, you know? Oh, you know okay. I'm like, I kind of wonder if that's actually one of the... Uh, I'm sure there's more than one goal for the Mars other than, you know, it'd be great to have a base that's a little bit I mean, up. that'd be super smart to stockpile all your resources because that takes... That automatically takes care of a big issue with um, mining anything from space is the weight cost to fucking propel anything with an explosion coming out of the back of your tubular shaped craft from point A to point B to point C. It's fucking expensive. Yeah. And it's highly inefficient. And to be able to just set up uh, a goddamn supply depot of crashed parts that are raw materials... At your hopefully new home, uh, that would be insane. It is. And asteroid asteroid mining is becoming more and more of a reality. Uh, There are more and more companies coming out. Unfortunately, most of them have failed thus far, but it's it's not going to be a... um, If we continue at this pace with the technology we have, it will become a reality. It just it's just gonna take it's just gonna take somebody that's brilliant enough has enough uh, has enough financial capital to actually get this going. But somebody lands something, for instance, like Psych sixteen, and you could be talking about every time you, for even as uh, for expensive as a trip as it would be, say to go to Mars, you may be able to bring home that much in uh, payload coming back. Mm. Then I don't think people are really gonna be terribly worried anymore about the trip. Oh. Yeah, we went to Mars. Here's the here, here's our gold return. Here's our you know blah blah blah. It was a profit. It was a profitable trip. Now, you know uh, that changes everything. Just setting up a base on Mars is that's just a lot of people don't understand. That's like that's like step one. You have to have that. Um, uh, China and Russia are setting up a, a nuclear reactor on the moon. They're doing that so that they have a launch point and. Um, for missiles, for weapons, it's not really. I, I don't think it's really for that. I think it's. I think it's about resources. I think once again, it's about resources. They're not worried about owning dead space. Who wants that? I, that'd be kind of like a, you know, an ocean with no fish. Um, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. Um, we want to get out into space because there's more. Uh, Everything that we have on Earth is also out there, but it's also out there in great massive quantities. That Psyche 16 is believed to be, uh, that asteroid is believed to be the core of a planet that was, for whatever reason, never finished developing. Maybe it got hit by something else. Get the bigger. fuck out of That's here. That's what that is. It's the, They believe it to be the core of a planet. How big is this thing? Psych six. I'm not sure how big it is, but you can only imagine what four quadrillion dollars worth of metal. How big that would be. I mean, <laughs> bigger than a, bigger than a Walmart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, so, solid uh, metals. 
you know, precious metals on top of that. God, I mean, dude. And you're just talking about it. it's not like you're you're going in and mining it. It's just right there in a big chunk. You're literally just cutting it off. You're yeah. just you're just like here's your piece. It sounds like factorio uh, DLC pack. Yeah, you're you're. Uh, 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 I mean, it has to be. Um, period. Like we can't we can't sustain with what we're doing. Not to mention, you know, just kind of the idea of uh, maybe the more wealthy. But this is this is about diversifying our portfolio. We've had all of our eggs in one basket on one planet because we've had to. Yeah. And we would be we would be idiots not to be trying to get out of uh, out of off of our planet if for nothing no other reason than also the continuation of the of the human race hell I, I mean i'll be honest even if even if it in, ends up just being the elite and some of the governments that are up in space i'm for that um that at least that means there's people up there you know they have now now maybe there's a few more options maybe there's some maybe there's some they just discovered a couple more moons on saturn maybe one of those moons are habitable i don't know but um we can't just continue to hope that our planet's good. I mean, I'm all for supporting our our planet, and making our planet the absolute best it can be. But, but um, you know, things happen. Something happened to those dinosaurs, man. <laughs> Something happened to the dinosaurs. Looking at those fossils, we're only just now like maybe we can take care of it. <laughs> if it happened to us, dude. Like those dinosaurs. Uh, looking at how big they were, that's just fucking preposterous. I'm like, there's no way, dude. This thing's as long as two buses, oh. and it was just walking around. The Megalodon. Oh, my goodness. Fuck a sh- that. A shark the size of the Empire State Building. Oh. Beautiful. That's crazy talk, man. It's beautiful. Well, that's what I'm saying. Something so... Those guys were pretty set up. It's kind of my point. They Dude. hung around for a long time, though, and didn't do much. I guess if we're comparing them to ourselves. Like the yeah. modern human, haven't been around that long. That's what I'm saying. Dinosaurs didn't have smartphones. Right, and and the and the only... Oh, shit, I'm so sorry, dude. What? Ah, you have a uh, towel. No, don't worry about it. Just it's, I was going to do laundry anyways. Um, the only... Oh, man, I feel bad. Why? It, it's like our, our big advantage here isn't that we're, we're big or that we're strong. It's that we're smart. And I, I think we better be utilizing that to the absolute full extent. And kind of like even talking about, you know, the idea of whether or not there, there are or are not aliens. If, they, if there are aliens, I want to go find them. And if there aren't aliens, we need to be the aliens out there. Because if we're not, then what else is going to get to see this? I honestly don't know. This universe. If I would react all that well to seeing an alien. I thought about it, and like my initial thought, especially when I was younger, like yeah, I'd want to hang out with them, and I'd probably have a fucking panic attack, dude. To be honest, I, I, I'd be a total alien sympathizer. I would. I am, a hundred percent. Like I'm like, I don't even care what we find out there. To be honest with you, uh, I mean, I, you take you take things as they come, but my theory on aliens is this: is that they're no different in. And that they are sentient than we are. They, if if they are conscious life, yeah. If they process and and they try to protect their own, and how could any race thrive without trying to basically do well and protect their own? So every every race, every tribe is going to come up with some sense of morality, whether it's alien or otherwise. Otherwise, they they would just kill themselves off, and they. You might have something that starts, but it's you'd finish really quickly. You know, like yeah. let's let's say you had a. A race of uh, bug warriors, you know. All right. And they're like, ah, oh, that's all we do. We fight and we fucking, ah, you know. And, and I mean, maybe, but I mean, the truth is, uh, over the long haul, if if they if they didn't eventually become civilized, they wiped themselves out. Well, that's an interesting argument, but you could also say that, like, if that was the case, then like, how would you explain like a lot of animals on the planet that act as colonies and they act just fine why wouldn't they be more efficient if they evolved with technology and so on and so forth and maybe they don't even really experience a type of morality 
Um, I, I think that oh, well, here, here's the thing. I don't think anybody experiences morality uh, on our planet as we experience morality. Oh, this yeah. Is, this is kind of like uh, the discussion of consciousness. I'm not conscious. You know, somebody asked me if, if uh, talking about animals being conscious. And I said, yes, they are. I believe they are. And he said, um, um, do you think that a bat could be conscious like a human? And I said, no, but could you be conscious like a bat? It's a different kind of consciousness. We're using different, because when we're talking about consciousness, I think you have to stick without getting into weird spiritual philosophical conversations and you have to keep it on a scientific basis. And consciousness is being aware of your surrounding. Awareness is composed of your senses. Senses are different according to the different animals. So if you have a bird, a bird is conscious unlike you, but it is conscious. A bird has family, it's going to raise a family, but a bird also sees all kinds of colors you don't see. And uh, uh, there are other animals, of course, that hear better, other animals, of course, that smell better, et cetera, et cetera. They're experiencing mm -hmm. an entirely different consciousness than you because of their sensory input. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they're going to totally... They're going to totally view the world better, and they're going to interact with the world differently according to their sensory input. Yeah, you know. Um, so we are only conscious, like we are conscious, but all of it's conscious, all of it's consciousness. It's it's life that's trying to survive and thrive. Period. Mm -hmm. Like, and and is uh, mostly limited by their intellect and who knows what else i think that's very species specific what's what's limiting them in there <laughs> mm -hmm. mostly us we're, we're probably the ones that are limiting most conscious life unfortunately yeah trying to trying to control it and manipulate it <laughs> eat it <laughs> mainly <laughs> yeah i don't i honestly think thinking about this yesterday at work i don't know what got me thinking about it or whatever but Oh, I remember what got me into this. I remember I was pissed off at how many customers were inside Bucky's, and I was like, "We need a good world war." <laughs> Just fucking I, all these spots would be opening up on the highway. All these fucking, you know, a few less fucking beaver dicks or whatever we sell at well, Bucky's. Well, you know, the funny thing is, so there's what you said, eight billion. Just under. I think okay. it's like 7.8. So, and that's about 1.5 billion up from the last time that I heard, which was only a couple of years ago. Uh, that many people on the planet. Now, think back, if you will, to when you were 20. Do you notice any less people on the planet? No, there seems way more. And it's doubled. Well, what I'm I'm saying is I I don't notice that there's locally. My experience locally isn't that oh, there's. Oh, uh, the population clock is currently eight billion ninety seven million eight hundred and twenty two thousand oh, wow. three hundred ninety blah 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 blah. It keeps so the, nine billion. Oh um, no, it's eight billion nine hundred twenty seven. Million? I said 97 million, not 900. Oh, no, okay, yeah, 97. Yeah. Okay, so right about 8 billion. Okay. 8, 8 billion, 100 million, or whatever. Yeah, that's. Uh, 100 million? Anyway. Yeah, I'm being 100 million. Um, that's insane. I can. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You could wipe out half the. The truth is, I mean, for, for, for locality, I think we could knock out half the planet and really not really experience. I mean, yeah, there'd be some changes, you know, over time. Yeah, I'll probably lose a few podcast listeners, you know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being a dick. But, but uh, even if you, even if we cut half off, um, yeah, even even if we cut half of the people off the planet, I'm not sure initially that there would be this great, not to mention it only take about 30 years before we got it back, <laughs> you know, at this rate. They say the population is declining now. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of curious as to actually how much it's declining because the truth is, if it's not extreme, then I'm... Uh, I, apparently, it's getting to the point where a lot of people are getting concerned. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Japan. They're more, yeah, Japan. Is one of them. Uh, I know with uh, 
decades ago with the one child policy act that China had really and started to affect its population and its dating pool and stuff because you have all men and hardly any women to date and they they don't want to fuck those guys apparently so uh, and then I think it's I think Italy is another one to where they have declining uh, birth rates us yeah, here, let me pull that up, too. While Pretty sure I'm we on. are. And these, uh, I mean, honestly, like you know, this this appears to me to have to do with the low testosterone levels around the world, which who knows exactly what's causing that, but it might be a good thing. Well, uh, a lot of people are starting to say that it's plastics with the phthalates. Right. Yeah, the microplastics from, ironically, from the healthy bottled water that we're drinking. Because yeah. we don't want to drink the regular water from our tap because of the fluoride, et cetera, et cetera. Scary. Uh, countries with declining <laughs> populations. Uh, Bosnia, uh, Herz- Herzegovina, Bulgaria. Oh, no, Herzegovina? <laughs> Latvia, Serbia, <laughs> Ukraine, I've Croatia, Georgia, Hungary, Japan, Lithuania, uh, Moldova, Romania, Albanian, Armenia. Greece, Italy, Portugal, Puerto Rico, and Syria. Those are all the ones currently on the list. Hmm. So we're not on the decline yet, huh? Uh, no. That's interesting. But that's on the World Population Review. Um, well, this site looks really high tech. But yeah, I mean, honestly, even if we had a war that blew out like half of half of the population, I don't know how much... To be honest, I don't know how much difference we would actually, even any individuals would see. Now, we would, I think we would see an impact in costs. Uh, suddenly, a whole bunch of shit would get real cheap because we'd have a whole bunch more resources for a whole fewer bunch of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what is that? Cost versus demand? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have, have almost no demand because you have no population to want anything. So then they'd be happy to get rid of something. And plus, everybody would be grieving since most of the fucking half the planet died. <laughs> <laughs> and there would just be there, every mo- fucking Monday through Friday would be a black sales event. No pun uh, intended. That's pretty funny. It would be really depressing. I don't think so. Uh, but then again, I, I kind of thrive at the idea of a mass extinction event. You sicko. I know. It's it's kind of... It is... I've told you about this before, haven't I? No. Uh, I have this kind of... They fantasize uh, about a mass extinction event? It's... No. They... they it, I, a long time ago on, um, like, NPR, okay. some lady was talking about this, and when she said it, I was like, oh, shit, I have that. And it was the first, like, real psychological <laughs> malady, I guess you'd call it, uh, it's not a major one, and it doesn't come into play every uh, very very often. Okay, but it is dangerous because I have to watch my emotional states when a tragic event occurs because I'm very excited, <laughs> like giddy, uh, about natural disasters and and not necessarily like people, but. I, there's, there's something about uh, you know loss of people or whatever I mean yes it's it's sad unfortunately when this happens I've never actually known anybody that died in some kind of a you know hur- hurricane or tornado and maybe if I maybe if I did know a few I'd be like yeah those are bad but uh, I haven't lost anybody in any one of those but when they happen like I remember when Abilene used to flood occasionally the whole town mm-hmm. pretty much underwater and uh I would go get waders, and me and my friend would go out and walk in that stuff and see if we could help firemen. Smiles on our faces. Apparently, he had a little bit of it, too. Um, I like... I, I used to, We used to storm chase a little bit when I was a kid. Okay. I like watching nature revert what man has done. Oh, watch it undo? Yes. And, uh, uh, it, I don't even think of it as undoing. I just think of it as, <laughs> quite frankly, especially when it comes to like water and hurricanes, is. It's kind of cleansing, you know, kind of like a fire, uh, kind of like a, a fire burning, burning. The cleansing brush. puts a, a biblical moral factor on it that doesn't. doesn't it though? <laughs> well, like the reason I said like undoing or unmaking or dematerializing is you're just breaking parts down. 
Mm-hmm. Now, whether those parts are, are living like people or trees or animals or they're not living like a house or a building or some sort of a structure like a bridge, you're still unmaking something that was made. It's not like the stuff just appeared one day. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that. I think that events like this get people back to the idea that we're, in fact, mortal. And that is another reason why I actually really, really enjoy natural disasters is because it is the recognition that we're, it is the recognition beyond doubt that we're on a very dangerous rock spinning through space and time. It's crazy when you think about it like that. We're in a fucking, a little terrestrial, uh, what is it, a terrestrial terrarium? I'm telling you, we are. We're and, in our own little bubble. And it ain't, and it, yeah, and, and as safe as it is, every once in a while, something really, really, really bad's going to happen, like, period. Like, even whether or not we cause it, and, you know, I don't think of this alarmingly. I just think it's a fact. Uh, scientists have said now that we've gone through four ice ages. What that tells me is um, is that the polar caps have melted now four times and then refrozen. Because mm-hmm. how else is an ice age? I mean, I could be an, a total idiot here, but how else does an ice age happen? But that. Yeah. So we've been through through uh, four of these heating periods and four cooling periods mm-hmm. now, and. Um, some people call that a cycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, these so so these these eras that that have occurred to Earth, it, it just it goes with common reason. Oh, not to mention, I've I've heard more than a few times that we're supposed to be at the beginning of an ice age right now, which really means we're probably supposed to be at the beginning of a stage where the Earth gets so hot that the caps melt, uh, regardless of. Whether or not we can stop this, or whether or not we even should, which is also a very interesting question. If we could, if we can, should we? What kind of you know what kind of differences is that going to cause if we if we decide to keep them cool somehow? If we can magically do something with our atmosphere and suddenly uh, make the caps colder and the earth doesn't flood, is that a good thing? You know, that's that's a question mark. You know, I don't know why I always thought this, but I always thought, wouldn't it be interesting if the whole planet just got involved and, like, com- like they have a way to desalinate the oceans, like, better than what they do, and water just starts getting sucked up by, like, every fucking country. It's just getting filtered into every country, like, veins. Going into or from an artery or whatever, I wonder how how low the ocean could get if if every country just had its fair share of just net, like clean water ready to go, instead of worrying about things getting hot or like really hot or really cold. I wonder what that would do. First, I don't even know if that would be possible to notice a difference, but. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Like, just take water straight up out of the ocean and just fucking store it. Similar to, like, how we do now with, like, you know, water water companies, you know, with water towers or tanks or, yeah. or whatever, but just on, like, a, on a much larger scale. What if every company had, like, uh, resources? Obviously, the ones that don't really seem to be doing so well with, like, fresh water, fresh, clean water is, like, Africa. And I imagine if... if, if Every country and province and city just fucking had its own fair share of water, just like a good lake's worth of water. Obviously, you know, what size a lake would be. And, and see, I think that doing something like that, I actually think is like, uh, that's 100% within our abilities to do. But, you know, talking Sucking about... up and storing clean water. Sure. Um, but that's a locality issue, unfortunately. We're just not interested in Africa because they're too far away. And so they're, they're you know, we're just kind of... We're just kind of focused on us mainly because of that, because we don't necessarily have to deal with Africa. Yeah. You know, like what do we that that is a question mark, though, is what do we get for like, let's say let's say we were like, yeah, let's make sure that there's one good, fresh tank of water in every community in Africa. It's like very noble cause. Um, well, I'm not just talking about like a small tank. Like I'm talking about a big facility. Yeah. It's just thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons of just and constantly sucking it up from the ocean. 
And I don't. Even, that's the thing. I don't even necessarily think you'd have to suck it up in the ocean. I think kind of like uh, kind of like with our situation. I mean, you just need collect the rain. Just just uh, proper uh, pro- proper water filtration systems. Oh yeah. I mean, we already we already. Uh, yeah, uh, not necessarily rain, but yeah, I, like I, actually, I don't really understand, or I, I don't know enough about Africa to know whether or not they have enough lakes and lo- localities with the lakes and w- what their problems are with clean water over there. Like I don't know. Yeah, but it didn't seem like it would be something that would be terribly difficult. It would just be costly. Yeah, you know? it would just be costly to actually create we created over here we we, we kind of got our system mostly right over here but see here's the thing i'm not sure that we have you know that's one question uh my sister brought this up and i need to do more research on it and i know this podcast i probably shouldn't be throwing out facts that i don't i don't really have my facts on but amy was saying that there are really high estrogen levels in our water and I started thinking about that, and I was like, "That's really interesting because uh, <laughs> you're like I'm growing tits." No, I'm just kidding. Well, you know, I, all I'm thinking is, is you know, I, I look back to like you know, like ancient cities like Rome, where they were like, you know, it was like a Caligula kind of thing or whatever. Is that Rome? Is that uh, Greece or Rome? I think it was Rome. It was it's Rome. the same thing. We're, so, ignorant. <laughs> we're ignorant. Rome whites. and Greece are the same. So uh, <laughs> everybody knows what everybody. you're fucking talking about. <laughs> You're well, going to get some <laughs> asshole listening. Actually, well, <laughs> so, so they so, can go fuck themselves. So, oh, God damn tit fuck. So my, so my, my water. yeah, my, my, my pseudoscience question here with all this estrogen in the water is, is this possibly one of the things that might have actually happened with, with, with uh, Roman? Is this possibly something that's actually even happening now that high estrogen levels in the water are either A, causing testosterone levels to drop, or B, simply causing more men to have a lot more estrogen in their system than they used to have. In which case, um, a lot of the talk about uh, you know what's happening in the world uh, sexually may not have anything to do with the individuals that are experiencing it. It's simply they're experiencing products of their environment that are, that they're being, uh, uh, basically subjected to kind of kind of like if i was to just eat if all i could ever ever eat was chips you know this is going to affect my dna this is going to affect my my body yeah um if all the water one of the most basic components that we have if our water's fucked in some way whether it's the microplastics or whether it's estrogen whether it's microplastics and estrogen together um this could be affecting uh the entire world all points point to uh, it being man-made plastics and then the actual food that's getting consumed in addition to lifestyles. Well, not to mention, I mean, let's look at it like this. I mean, it's still better off than the Stone Ages, but I mean, as far as like uh, for survivability. But uh, if, if, it, if it is having a basically if it's going to have an effect on our reproductive to the point where it creates a great filter then yeah we're we're in really deep shit we may be in like deep irreversible shit with this microplastics I don't think um people that are kind of uh like the type of people that you're talking about people like me um indirectly you know like I'm purposely taking these hormones uh like that being uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Because when you start microdosing things at an inconsistent basis, like I, I don't know what that math would look like for the entire world's population. But then again, I don't know if this is just a Western phenomenon. It might just be America and the Europe. Microplastics thing. Yeah. No, it's anywhere where they have bottles. It's yeah. anywhere, anywhere where they're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Um, if uh, a, a mass producing mass producing bottles of anything, uh, from what I understand, there's no difference in between. For instance, that yes, there's microplastics in the water because it's the water bottle. Mm. But if this were a Coke bottle, there'd be microplastics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's just microplastics now in the in the Coke. So I don't think it really has anything to do with the water. 
It's just about the plastic. No, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because they were even talking about like utensils you eat with, and the and the containers that food is stored in and yeah. eaten in. So even like Tupperware that you can fucking reuse and heat and cold and heat and cold and fucking. But let's face it, I, I think we all, hopefully, humanity has been looking at this whole plastics thing that we're doing and realizing this was all kind of a bad idea in the first place. I mean. Let's face it, like, the, the whole thing was a bad idea. Plastic bags, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Plastic bags at the grocery mm-hmm. store, really stupid. In fact, it, it, almost just as stupid as paper bags. Now, we should have been doing what, I, I, I hate to use China as a good example, because I usually don't for a lot of things, but they actually have the right idea, which is they make people take their own bags. You have your own bags, mm-hmm. and that's how you get your groceries, and that's the... That's just the smart way to do it. There was no yeah. sense in ever creating any of this trash. And anybody, I think, that fights that idea is <coughs> fighting something that's an easy thing for all of civilization to change. And it's absurd that we're... Uh, it, honestly, it's really absurd that we're not. Like, we, this should be... This should have been law passed by every nation a long time ago. That, we, you know, plastic plastic wares, not, maybe not out, outlawed and banned altogether... But it should be like extremely limited amounts. Like there's no purpose for it. Yeah. I don't, the other thing too, though, is because people seem to be like be amping it up, and everybody's like, "Oh, well, it's like, you know, either this is why we have so many more transgender people, or this is the only reason transgender people are a thing." Um, and they they try to make all that seem like it's a thing well and it's like well how is it affecting some people then and then no people at all because you're not a tranny you're not trying to become a woman you don't have these types of thoughts or living your life the way no, i do but to be honest and with you've you, been around a lot longer are you telling no, me no, you no. haven't eaten more plastic than me no no but you know i i was thinking about this um mm. uh, this is just something that i've noticed mm. is that And I'm not trying to say that it it is a reason. I'm just saying, I I, I do want to say, I just think that this could be. Like, in other words, it's it's a thought that I, I, it's a thought I cannot. Don't walk on eggshells, spit it out, fucker. I mean, it's a thought I cannot escape from. Yeah. Is that, um, like, for instance, whereas you're right, uh, generally speaking, I'm, I am, uh, I'm straight. I would say 98% straight. 98%, 98%, right? Every once in a while I see a guy and I'm like, I don't know why I was kind of attracted to that guy, right? Well, you so probably say, about as straight as most straight people. Yeah. Um, but um, my sister, she swings both ways. Um, all of, Nearly all of my friends' kids, and I know a lot of kids now, and this is the thing that's really freaking me out. Like... It wouldn't. I, I was. I don't even know if I'd say freaking me out. I just. I just find it highly interesting. I'll put it that way. Mm-hmm. That I don't know a single one of my kids' friends that by the age of 15, 14, 15, 16, that they're actually talking about highly interested in the opposite sex. Like it's just not happening right now. And most of these kids a great grand majority, I'm talking like 75%, it seems like, seem to be either confused about their sexuality or asexual. Like, they're just not interested. And that doesn't make any, even make any, like, logical sense to me from what I grew up with. When I was growing up, the kids that I was growing up with, it was their number one discussion. It was the number one discussion to talk about... uh, and we none of us had even had sex yet. <laughs> but we were so interested in that topic on a daily basis, on a regular basis. It's not a discussion anymore. And I know kids that are like, now they're going on 19, 20, 21. Mm-hmm. They have no sex drive. And to me, that is like, it's foreign. Like, I don't even understand. I mean, it's it, maybe in a way it's cool for them. I'm not, I, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not going to be here if the, if the human race is dwindling out for whatever reason. Maybe we petered out, maybe we ran out of good semen. I don't know. Okay. But I'm just kind of talking about these, uh, these declining population rates around the world. If these declining population rates are actually being caused by something physiological, yeah, which I'm almost certain they probably are, um, I think this is what you'd see. 
is you would see a bunch of people that are either going basically asexual or uh, they're suddenly finding an interest in, in the... Because I don't think that pe people don't... Uh, you can take away people's sexuality, but you can't take away their, their love interest, right? You can't mm -hmm. take that away. Um, yeah, I think people, I would be evidence of that. Well, I have no sex drive, but I... And a, romantically things are never have never been better for me so yeah. to prove your point yeah I, I mean everybody everybody wants period uh you know uh having having human connection having close human connection uh, uh transcends any kind of need for uh reproductive uh for continuation of the human race it, it goes even beyond that like we all just want to be loved period we do yeah um, we, we want our friends. We want maybe some female friends. I like to have both. I like to have female friends, not even just for a relationship. I, I want to have a female friend every once in a while so I can talk about female things with the, with the things I can't talk about some with my male friends. Mm. You know, some of them, mm. I, I have some conversations with some people and I have some conversations with other people. Yeah. And that's not because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> it's because some people don't want to talk about certain things. Yeah. And I respect those boundaries. You know, but yeah, um, I don't know. But what I'm saying is it seems like a very, and I could be in a pocket, but it, it seems like a very large number of the younger kids, like, and I'm talking specifically now between like 15 and 21 that I know that I've been watching them, watching mm -hmm. them grow and waiting till they talk about girls or boys or whatever. Yeah. And then they never did. And I'm like, how are you? Like, you know, like as an uncle type figure, I can come in and ask them. Yeah. And it's not creepy or anything. Most, right. But, and most of them just, they're not interested. The thing is though, and I'm like, what do you mean? If you were to actually get all the information, how much porn have these people been consuming the same ones that you're so concerned about? We didn't I grow. I consume a lot of porn. We didn't though when we were kids. <laughs> we didn't have it all the time. I was. Uh, not. You couldn't get it on the internet as easy as you can now because it didn't exist. You no, that's couldn't true. get it on your smartphone then because those didn't exist. Yes, it, it was a, it, it was on tap. Now now what I'll say I, I actually have a couple of different things I say about that. Yeah. One. On the on the porn, uh, one thing I would say is whether it was a little or whether it was a lot as kids we would have been very interested no matter what i mean we were we were di dumpster diving after we found our first playboys we were dumpster diving like at age eight not, not all the time but you know we were doing it enough to yeah. notice the little shits trying to find playboys and shit inside and, but and for whatever reason there was a large compared number. to what people have now there's no comparison like I went through my dad's sock drawer to like look for porn, right? And he but had do you a few think that? Do you, do you think that the 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 that uh, because they have the porn that that's killed off need for sexual relations? Is that what you're saying? In my personal experience, having like I would have days where I would masturbate anywhere between one and three times. You don't have an interest in the opposite sex when you've cleaned the pipes several times a week. You just don't. I don't know. See, I, I can't tell you how many well, times I, I, I would be I interested would... in a girl and not clean the pipes so I could like, actually <laughs> like her. As <laughs> right. soon as I come, what? You got decent tits? You got no personality. I mean, you could be right, man. It, 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 it could be. Uh, it, it's and a lot of these Because that is another thing that's changed. Well, a lot of the guys that talk about this stuff say they have a lot of performance issues because they're always watching other people have sex but never having it themselves. Right. And once you... And some of these kids are 11, 12, 13 years old that are exchanging nude pics with each other and videos. Right. And uh, maybe they've had sex at an early age and then they all resort to porn because they get exactly what they want to see. They get they can find exactly their taboos. M men, women, boys, girls. They can watch whatever they're interested in yeah. at whatever intensity level, at whatever quantity. And it yeah. just goes on forever, basically. Yeah. Uh, I've never met a bitch ever in my entire life that has been you know, nearly as interesting as any of the porn that I've ever watched, knowing it's fake. That That is a good question. I mean, you could be right. And I'm not trying to be right or be correct, but 
the one thing that a lot of people don't seem to really consider is the porn consumption. Yeah. The amount of it at such an early age, being able to just pull it up on your phone while you're at school, while you're on the bus, while you're at home, or using it uh, on your laptop or your PC and jerking off in your chair or in your bed. I didn't have that stuff growing up, and I had porn in, in the other room all the time. And it's just, it's not as intense as it is now. That stuff back then was dog shit compared to now. Yeah. If we're talking true. about just watching stuff that makes you spit jizz right away, the stuff they're making now is insane. Yeah. No, I agree. But yeah. anyways. There, there's kind of a niche for uh, for for every kind of... Uh, and there's a, there's a fucking market for it. But anyways, we'll talk a little bit more about games next time because I there was some more stuff that I wanted to ask you, but we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of running on a deadline, folks. So I am going to sign off. So again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, originalsin1369 at gmail.com. Uh, somebody did send me an email. I uh, am not going to be reading that this time around. Next time around, I will totally get to it. Uh, So anyways, folks, I had fun per usual. I will talk to you later, folks. Bye.